A brief overview of some qualitative research designs. A qualitative uh, research design is a broad umbrella in which we find several designs. A design is a set of research data collection, analysis, and interpretation methods to carry on a research study. But before you conduct a research study, you need to choose one of the qualitative research design. So it depend, uh, depends on the main purpose of the study. Although there are probably dozens of qualitative research designs, so let's briefly outline five major ones that are practical for beginning qualitative research. So once you choose uh, the one that fits for your study, you can highly you are highly encouraged to read more about the design. So we have first here the case study. What is a case study? And when are going to use case study? A case study is one of the most commonly uh, used design. You use case study if you want to understand uh, one or few institutions, processes, individuals, or phenomena in depth. For instance, if you want to learn about the process of getting a university admission, uh, you could use case study. So if you wish to know what makes a hospital so famous, uh, you could study that hospital by interviewing doctors, patients, staff, and observing them in that hospital. If a town has too many teen mothers or many children who don't go to school, you can use case study to understand the problem and propose solutions to that community. Next, we have ethnography. Ethnography is used to describe the culture of people, a community, an organization, or a country. So whenever you wish to understand cultural values and practices of a group, your best design is ethnography. Oh, usually, ethnographic research uh, studies take a long time because it takes quite some to learn through thoroughly the culture of people. However, if you want to use ethnography in your subject, uh, you can simply use the mini ethnography, which requires a lot less time. The next one is phenomenology. Well, this design originated in philosophy. It can be carried out from at least two different perspectives. But some people simply use it to describe the intense lived experiences of people. For instance, if you want to do research on the experience of giving birth for the first time, the experience of facing death, a death threat, the experience of being robbed or preparing for a board exam. The experience of going to jail for the first time. Or the experience of living in an orphanage. So phenomenology would be a good choice for you. From the first perspective, uh, your job as a researcher is simply to describe the phenomenon in the way people lived it. So when you become an advanced researcher, you can now take phenomenology to a much deeper level where you try to understand the deeper meaning of uh, such intense experiences. So the second type of phenomenology is not uh, at the level of new researchers. It is something you can do when you are at the university level. The next one we have action research. Action research is such uh, is used when you 
uh, have a specific problem in your field of expertise that you want to understand, generate solutions for, test those solutions to improve the way you do things, and then create guidelines on how to improve, uh, on how to implement those solutions. Uh, you have to document the whole process. So the end result must be an improved way of doing things in your work. For instance, a teacher can conduct an action research study to improve his or her own teaching practice. And the last one we have, yes, content analysis. Content analysis. So this design can be used if you uh, have some documents that you want to explore to understand a certain problem. Uh, for instance, you can decide to use uh, newspapers to understand the type of content that is commonly published in a community. You could also decide to consider how a, com a municipal hall organizes its files for future reference. Mm -hmm how this affects the daily work of that municipality. Uh, you could decide to look at different posters and magazines of a school to understand how religion or moral values are promoted here. You may wonder how many people should be included in a research, this, uh, research study. So different uh, qualitative research experts have different answers. One of the best answers is that you stop collecting data, for, for example, uh, through interviewing people when you reach the saturation level of your data. Now, what is a data saturation? Data saturation is a stage that the researcher reaches when data starts being repeated. So, for instance, when you are interviewing people at a certain time, you will come to the point where the new interviewers will tell you things that you have already heard from previous interviews. So, when nothing new comes up in your interviews, you have reached the data saturation level, or simply put, uh, your data is saturated. At that point, you can stop collecting data. So take a look at this um, uh, table. Uh, the proposed uh, minimum number of participants per design. For the qualitative uh, design case study, we have eight participants. So this is minimum. Uh, ethnography, we have 15, uh, phenomenology, that is 8, and action research, uh, 10, content analysis, 10. So the proposed number of participants uh, given is solely based on estimates. With that uh, minimum number of participants, you can get to the data saturation level. In some studies, depending on the research problem, you may have to include more research participants. You will notice that ethnography requires more participants. This is because it deals with culture. Culture is very complex to study. In fact, uh, 15 research participants are not even enough for a full uh, ethnographic study. So that number may be enough only for a mini ethnography. That means uh, a small ethnographic study.